Wings are such lovely things, and there are many tutorials out there on the internet for different ways of making wings for different sorts of projects. I needed wings for a fairy and came up with a way that I think is rather unique. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay video at keepsakecrafts.net. So quite a while ago, I bought this rubber stamp from Barbara McGuire's shop on Etsy. It's called Art Source. I'll have a link to it at my blog. Unfortunately, right now, I can only see the larger version. It's like an 8x10 version, about four times the size of this available in her shop but perhaps you can inquire and see if she's going to have the smaller one but this was actually perfect for the project i want to do i had in mind to make some wings for a fairy this is a little fairy doll that i made you might wonder why she looks rather sad and unhappy well there's a good reason for it she's part of a larger sculptural piece finishing her wings is actually part of finishing the sculpture so once that's completed i'll post that on my instagram what I realized as I was looking at this stamp was that I actually needed the reverse of what I had. This is an outie, so to speak. All of the pieces are coming out from the clay, and what I wanted to do was make an any or a mold. And for that, what better to use than molding putty? It's a two-part molding putty. If you want to know more about it, I've done a Friday Findings video on it. I use it in a lot of things. You mix up equal amounts of part A and part B, and, and then they start to set, and you can make yourself molds and texture sheets. I used about a golf ball size of each of the compounds. Uh, it was a fair amount because I wanted this to have some thickness so I could make sure and press on it and have some depth to it. Do be sure when you're mixing up your compound that you do it carefully and don't introduce air bubbles. I did have a few and that gave me, like I don't know if you can see here, kind of an uneven spot and some voids. I, this may have been also that, well that's an air bubble. There's a couple of areas that are air bubbles and maybe I didn't press down well enough. So do take care when you make your mold from your texture sheet that you do it nice and even. Follow the manufacturer's instructions and let this compound set up. Yeah, you, in fact, you can see all the bubbles I got in there. Not good. Be a little bit more careful than I was. Now you have a mold made from your texture sheet and now we can do some really cool things with it. You could just fill this with regular polymer clay, but the tricky thing about that is you don't have the flattest surface out here to level them out. So what I decided to use was liquid clay. I figured that would be the best way to fill them. The first thing I did was half clear liquid clay and half pearl because I wanted my wings to have a bit of shimmer. What I found though is that the clear is actually very thin, which is nice because it will fill in the voids in your mold but the colored clay like the pearl is a lot thicker so I, for my first try was 50 percent of each but now i i decided to thin it way down besides i'm going to paint these so i didn't need a lot of pearl in fact you could probably skip the pearl altogether but i sort of like the idea so i put just a small amount like maybe an, a tenth of what i put in for the clear if you watched my video a couple weeks ago, I put up a short like two minute video showing you my first mixture of these two that were mixed in one of these containers. And I had mixed it and then hadn't gotten back to it as soon as I had expected to. And the problem is that this is the type of plastic, it's a number six plastic, and it doesn't react well to polymer clay. If you wanna see what happens when you leave liquid clay in a cup like this, for a couple weeks, you can go watch that video. I'll link to it. It was kind of amusing. So that's why today I have it in a little ceramic dish. So if I have leftover, I can just leave it in here and not worry about it eating through the plastic. You need far less than you might expect to fill one of these wings. Well, let's fill this one. Start with maybe a quarter teaspoon. Aim to slightly underfill it. It will make things easier for you later and I'll show you why. 
I'm using an awl here because what I want to do is guide this liquid clay into all the corners and the crevices and into all the detail. And as you let it sit, it'll settle. You do want to make sure that you let all the bubbles rise to the top. So I'm just coaxing that along and getting as much mileage out of it as I can. I might just need another teeny tiny drop, just what I can drop off the corner of the tool. So a toothpick will work here too. I just love using my awl. And you just guide it in until you have a very thin layer of the liquid clay. And try to keep it off the edges as much as possible because that is clay you're going to have to trim away later. You may see some bubbles. And the best thing for getting rid of the bubbles is just time. Just let it sit and the bubbles will all rise to the surface and they should pop on their own. You can kind of give it a few taps. You can see why I wanted to make sure and have a thinner liquid clay rather than something thicker so that these would all be filled in well. So I hope that you have been inspired by this tutorial and if you have and if you enjoy my teaching and the videos that I make you might consider becoming a patron because those who support me on Patreon get the opportunity to get up to two bonus tutor tutorials every month. You can check out all the details of how that works at patreon.com. You also get the satisfaction of knowing that you're helping to keep these videos coming for everybody because although they are free for you to watch, and I always want to keep it that way, they are not free for me to make. They cost quite a bit in time and materials. Something to think about if you want to get some bonuses for yourself and know that I'll be able to continue making these. Then you can make as many of those as you want and then bake them. One thing to notice is that the liquid clay actually bakes at a slightly higher temperature than the solid clay. The directions on the bottle say to bake it between 300 and 325 degrees Fahrenheit. So I promised you in the title of this video that I would show you how to make these wings three-dimensional. Here are two that I baked already and you might notice that there is some trimming that needs to be done around the edges. This is actually very important at this point. You just want to get a sharp little pair of scissors and trim all that. You know I think it's called flash. I actually spent way too long looking it up online. Isn't that what it's called like in ceramics when you have that or in mold making, when you have that extra bit around the edge, isn't that called flash? There are a lot of meanings to the word flash. Just go look at thesaurus.com <laughs> or don't. But what you need to do is to trim all of this excess and even a little bit, if you want, of the very edge of your shape. Because you're going to want it to fit nicely on top of the other side of the shape to make it two-dimensional. And what I mean by that is one like this, where I have the impression of the wings on both sides. Once you get your shape trimmed, now you can pop it right into the mold down on top of the liquid clay. And if you've trimmed it well, it should fit in there very nicely. Take your time. Don't press too hard. You don't want the liquid clay to ooze up over the edges. But press it down so that there aren't any voids or air bubbles. And it should just snap, pop right in there nicely. And here's one, uh, the one I didn't trim. And I can feel it. You probably can't see it on camera. But I can feel that that's not, I can feel this edge sticking up here. It's just not fitting down as nicely. I need to pull it out, clean it off. <laughs> yeah, this isn't the way to do it. So clean it off and then trim it really nicely. And even if you just trim a little bit, tiny bit, just trim small amounts. You can always go back and trim more, but don't take too much off. Trim it, pop it on, and then bake it again. Here's my mold with some of the pieces out of the oven. As you can see, some of them are the first time around and some are the second. 
even being very careful, sometimes there are a few voids in the in the clay. Do be as careful as you possibly can when you're filling your mold to make sure that you don't have any of these empty spaces. Now here's an example of one that I did not line up very well. In fact, you can see it. I don't know how I missed it, but you can see that that isn't lined up. Um, I might not even bother using this. I might. It would depend on the project, but this is pretty poorly lined up. These ones are better. You can really see the thin spots are very thin through both layers. And once they come out of the oven, you'll have to do another trimming job to make them all nice and neat and tidy. Now this is the first pair that I made. I'm going to show you how to paint them in a moment, but I wanted to point out a few things. This was the one using the 50 pearl and the 50 clear mix. And the liquid clay was obviously so thick that it didn't even get down into some of these areas. So you really do want to make sure that it's fairly thin. You could use just all clear, that would be fine. But there are a lot of voids and I honestly didn't notice them until I started trying to paint it and then they became really apparent. Another thing I did was I let them cool after the second bake. They were on an index card and I just propped that index card up against something and let them cool like that so that they have a nice curved shape. And you can put some wire in here. You can do whatever you want. Use them any way you like. They can be butterfly wings. Add them to a fairy like this little gal, although I'm going to give her a nicer pair that doesn't have all the voids. You can paint these any way you want. There's all sorts of things. Anything that you could use to paint polymer clay, you could use to paint these. What I did for this was I used Inca Gold because I think it's just fascinating stuff. It's fairly new to me. Inca Gold is actually water soluble, so get yourself just a tiny bit of water in a cup. And I've got a little itty bitty brush here. I'm gonna wet the brush and then rub it in the Inca Golds and make a nice thick paint. What's great about these is you can thin it down as much as you want and have a different consistency for a paint. So maybe I want this thinner and I want this paint to go down into all those crevices. By the way, I found after painting that this Inca Gold sort of rubbed off. So what I did was I put these back in the oven at the, I think at 300 degrees, the, the manufacturer's recommended temperature for another 20 minutes. And you can see I'm rubbing it, it's not coming off. So that just will heat set it for you. There we go. So you can paint these however you like. So if you're gonna use something like the Inca Golds that already have a mica shimmer, you might not even worry about using the pearl clay because you're going to get your sparkle from your paint. Okay, I cleaned my brush, got some fresh water, and now I've got a different color here. And these will dry out, like this blue. You can probably see it's kind of cracked around the edges. Just add some water. And that will refresh it just beautifully. It looks like this purple one's starting to get dry. I love this little sampler pack. I'll have a link to this at my blog post. You can buy them individually at Amazon, but I got this little sample tower, I think it's called, from Poly Clay Play, and I've been really happy with it because, let's face it, in polymer clay, the kind of work I do anyways, I'm probably not going to use more than what is in here in a lifetime. So it was nice to get five different colors for like $15. So you get the idea. You can go over that. Just like with any coloring medium, you can usually layer them. I'm gonna use my finger here. It's kind of messy, but this is creamy enough that I can go back over that with the, oh, that's not dry yet. So you do wanna let it dry in between. I'll show you on this side. What I mean though is that you can go over the top with your finger or in, I might, here we go. Let's see. Yeah, see how that's still wet? Oh, there we go. Ooh, 
That's fun. So anyways, you get the idea. You can play with these endlessly, add color, layer color. You don't have to use Inca Gold. You can use any colorants you want. Oh, that's pretty if you just left them clear and went over with the color. So I hope that you take this idea and run with it. Uh, think of things besides wings that perhaps you have rubber stamps for. There are so many different possibilities. I know you're going to have a whole lot of fun with them. If you're interested in the supplies I used, be sure to click on the eye in the upper right or the link in the description box to go to my blog post where I always have a complete supply list and links to products. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. Happy creating. Bye-bye.